For the like folks, welcome back to the channel. This week we're taking this for a spin. The 2023 Triumph Street Triple 765 RS. You know, it's like it's been punched in the nose. Oh, 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 <laughs> this is snow. Look, it's snow lying in the road. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel folks. So this is the brand spanking 2023 Triumph Street Triple 765 RS. Oh, quick shift those lovely. Oh, this handles well. I'm loving this. I'm going to tell you straight out the gate. What a weapon. What a weapon this is. The thing the PR teams are all shouting from the rooftops about is the engine. This is Moto2 derived 765cc triple 12 valve engine. It's breaking records all over the option. Wherever it seems to be getting used, whether it's in Moto2, in the American series, wherever it gets used, this engine is absolutely spanking the competition. It's setting records everywhere in already Already, I can see why. I tell you what, we may as well talk about practicality. People are going to commute on bikes like these, for sure. What's it like? Well, you can see here, despite the fact that this is actually a wider handlebar, the bike itself with the bars, it's wider than the previous model. It's still a piece of P to filter through the traffic. It's beautifully balanced. Throttle doesn't feel snatchy. You know, for second gear, relatively low revs. It's lovely. Really well balanced, well fueled engine. So that's me in first gear. It's not too snatchy at all on the throttle. You can moderate that quite well. First and second gears, really quite usable for around the town. But that's enough about city riding. You buy one of these, you're going to want to get it out in the open road. So what's it like? Well, funny you should ask. So a quick bit of dual carriageway just to show you what it's like. I haven't got the cockpit cam, I'm afraid. Motorway speed, 70 odd mile an hour here in the UK. It's quite windy obviously, there's no screen whatsoever, but it's it's not unbearable. And um, obviously on a closed track, I have had it a little bit more. And yeah, it's, it's fine, it's fine. Obviously it would be a lot better if it had a big screen, but that's not the nature of this bike. So you can't complain about that. If you're going to be doing prolonged high speed, sort of touring, motorway commuting, that sort of stuff, then yeah, you'll probably want some kind of screen. But it's not unbearable. Just get on with it. Right, back onto the twisties. I'm in Kent, folks. It's like looking for the holy grail trying to find national speed limit roads in Kent these days. Everywhere is just 50s and 40s now. It's ridiculous. Anyway, I have been riding this bike. I've had it for about a week. And I decided, right, I was going to ride off camera just to get a good feel for the bike before I did this vid rather than another first ride. So obviously, off camera, you can have a little bit of fun and sort of explore the bike a bit more. Research, all in the name of research. It's a customer service officer. Nationals! Oh, I'm in fifth gear. <laughs> Believe me, this thing has got pickup. Typical tip triple engine, knock it down a couple gears, somewhere like that from 40 mile an hour. Second gear, even third, coming to the Nationals. Oh, it's just beautiful. This engine is glorious. It's beautiful. I love the triple engine anyway. I love the sound of it on these streets and especially on that uh, speedy on the 1200. Oh, it's just beautiful. Now look, it's a little bit moist on the road now. This is typical. It has been a glorious sunny day so far today. It's been dinging it down with rain pretty much all week that I've had this. So I've been out riding in the blooming rain. 
give it a little wash, come out in the sunshine today, bang, there we go. But there's still a fair bit of blue sky around about, so you never know, we could be lucky. But anyway, back to this. Right, I'm trying to steer out the way of this rain as best I can and look for the um, the blue skies. We found a national. <laughs> now this thing comes on Pirelli Super Corsos. Not the greatest tyres to use in the wet, I've got to admit. However, so far, so far, I've not experienced any major issues. I've got to admit, I just don't see the point in these mega sort of race orientated sticky tyres, certainly in the UK. Modern sport touring tyres will do absolutely everything. As proven by Ron Aslam, you know, Ron Aslam's race school used to use the Bridgestone uh, BT21s, then the 23s, and then the T30s, T32s. Sport touring tyres, they're, they're just modern tyres do everything. However, I know, it's horses for courses, it's what you like. Some people out there like the mega sticky stuff, so whatever. For me, if I had one of these bikes, I would have no qualms just whacking a set of modern sport touring tyres on there. Anyway, oh, it's a 50. You're doing 55. <laughs> Sorry, Nigel. Right, back to the bike. Handling of this thing, handling. The handling of this bike is just superb. They've tricked up the chassis of this bike a little bit. They've basically dropped it at the front, raised it at the back, but made the, the rake even sharper so that the bike really, you know, it's like it's been punched in the nose. And that produces this incredibly dynamic, beautifully like aggressive sitting position you have. You know, you're sort of over the front of the bike, nice wide bars there, making the handling just effortless. It is beautiful to ride, it really is. They've set out to make this the, the mid-range industry leading naked. And I'll tell you, certainly having just come off the Honda Hornet CB750, I mean, that is a great bike. And it's a great bike because of the money. Seven grand, you'll pick one of them up. This, £11,295 for this the Street 7765 RS model. So there's a big difference in price, but it has to be said, there is a big difference in the feel of the bike, the look of the bike, the toys that the bike comes with, and the handling. I mean, the Hornet, the Hornet is not a bad bike by any stretch of the imagination, folks. But this, this is a whole, whole different level. Now, that was fourth gear, by rights, could have easily been in third, if not second for that, but it still did it, no problems. Let's drop this down to second for this one. Really bumpy road, suspension eats that up, no problem. Oh, it is beautiful. It's like a scalpel. I've said that before on other bike reviews, I really have. Generally, I think I actually said that on the Speedy, the last Speedy review I did, because this reminds me of that, if not, do you know, dare I say it, I think I even prefer this. And this is the smaller bike. My mates are big Triumph fans. My mate Mooley, Turner, Wee Sai. They've all had uh, Speedies. And Sai has had, the, and Mooley, they've both had earlier incantations of the, of this, of the street. And they laughed when I said I was getting this bike. Because they said, you're going to be massive on it. I tell you, I don't feel it. I, really, I genuinely don't feel big on this bike at all. It, it, it feels like it fits me. What do you think? I'll grab some footage now of me riding on the bike. What do you think? Oh God, these roads are crap. Full of potholes everywhere. And while I'm on that topic, I don't find this an uncomfortable bike at all. Seat height, 836 millimeters. You can get a lowered kit from the dealership. And there's also a, a sort of special lowered seat, which will bring the seat height down even further. I think it drops 28 millimeters off of the original seat. So if you're a bit short in the leg, there should be an option there that will accommodate the vast majority of you. Pegs wise, um, they're not sports bike height. They're not adventure bike height, as you'd expect. 
but um, I've had no issues with these, none at all. Feels perfectly comfortable for me, almost the perfect height to get my knees into this lovely sculpted tank that it has. Funny that, almost like they designed it for that. <laughs> the bars, as I've said before, the bars are lovely and wide. Really nice, commanding riding position. I'm genuinely very, very taken with this bike. Show me those nationals. Where are you? Ominous grey, bluey clouds up there. Has this got cruise control? I didn't think it had cruise. Right, so what does this bike come with? Let's get out into some decent roads and I'll tell you if we ever find any. There they are, there they are. Nationals! Right, second gear. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Oh, I love this bike. I love it. I love it. I love it. Lots of grit and gravel in the road here. Now, these are very bumpy back roads. So before I get onto the gadgets and gizmos, or oh, gadgets and gizmos, I'll tell you about the suspension on this bike. Let's get by this. Now, as you oh, as you'd expect, they've thrown the catalog at this bike. It has. Show up big piston forks, fully adjustable, and it's got the Olin's fully adjustable shock for the rear. And the braking is equally bling, it's got big old Brembo 310mm twin discs at the front, it's also full Brembo four piston dual calipers for the front with a Brembo master cylinder all fully adjustable let's trundle around here and it's got the Brembo single caliper at the rear and as you'd expect they all do a fantastic job combining that with the shock and suspension setup that this bike comes with it's a very, very reassuring ride. Lots of grit and gravel on this road. I thought I felt the back sliding a bit there. Speaking of which, this thing has full traction control. It's even lean angle sensitive. And that also goes for the ABS. It literally has all the toys. Oh, except cruise control. That's what got me onto this initially. I'm assuming cruise control is something you can get as an extra. I'll pop that up on the screen now. But everything that I've just mentioned comes for your £11,295 price tag. One thing I think this bike has that I'm on, which the standard doesn't, is heated grips. I believe that is an extra. This one has it which I'm very thankful for. I've got them on at the moment. Oh, quick shifter is lovely. This thing has quick shifter and blipper. Beautifully smooth, as you'd expect. It just feels like it's got pull everywhere through the rev range, first, second, third gear. It's lovely. Really usable. I mean, it's maximum, what's the BHP? I think it's 100 and, is it 128 or 130? BHP and that is around about 12,000 revs, 12,500 revs. I think it's 12,000 revs. So obviously very high revving engine. Did that give way? I thought that was give way. Maximum torque is, uh, ooh, is it 80 or 90? I think it was only 80 from what I remember reading. And I remember thinking, oh, that's not that much. But this thing's got plenty, nationals, plenty of grunt. And that maximum torque is around about nine, nine and a half thousand revs. So it sounds like it's a very high revving engine to get that sort of performance, but it's definitely usable. You know, you, you can still have loads of fun, first, second, third gears, low revs. It's one of these bikes which will happily sit in second, screaming its danglies off, or you can whack it up into third for that smoother ride. Obviously, any of you who aren't used to this channel, welcome. Get a little bit about me, I am 6 foot 3, 20 stone, just to give you some sort of perspective when I'm chatting about seating position, how it feels, comfort, all this sort of malarkey. 
and also on the suspension obviously if you're a little bit lighter than me I mean there'll be people out there who are half my weight for sure the suspension is going to react differently for you than this will for me so keep that in mind it is a firm ride well I'm finding it a firm ride but I like that I like a nice firm ride so no complaints from me at all I haven't got any complaints at all about this bike to be honest with you oh yes I do yes I do now USB ports manufacturers are cottoning on to the fact that we're all using our phones we use our phones for navigation we use them for comms we use them for music they're getting used more and more and more so manufacturers thankfully are starting to put charging ports USB USB-C all this sort of stuff but there seems to be a little bit of a trend now they're trying to force you into their native sort of apps triumph has the is it triumph ride app or something like that honda's got their version suzuki's got their version bmw have their version they're all trying to make you use their app so you can get turn by turn navigation all that sort of stuff on the big tft screens which all the modern bikes tend to have now but what that does mean is that the usb connection is often in the back of the bike so your phone has to sit separate away from you Obviously, I use Kalimoto for all my navigation. Links down below for a free month's premium use of Kalimoto. Drop me a line if you fancy that. And I use the Ultimate Add-ons phone holder. Again, if you use the code teapot1 with the number 10, teapot1 with the number 10, you'll get 10% off from Ultimate Add-ons and that code also works over at the Dango Design website for the gripper mount. Got some content coming on that soon. Really good, versatile bit of kit that. But anyway, back to this. So yeah, if I want to power my phone, I either have to leave it in the, the back under the pillion seat or I've got to have a massive long cable running from the back around my fat ass up to the phone at the front here. No thanks. Just give us a USB port up the front. A weatherproof USB port. It's not much to ask, folks. Come on. Now, these are bumpy roads, but this bike just eats them up. Uh, it would be a jump, but you never know. What's on the other side? Case in point, park van with a pub. This is nice out here. I've never been here. Ooh. This is very nice. I'm racking my brains, folks, to try and think of something I don't like about this bike. I wasn't that keen on this yellow or gold paint job initially. I really like the red one. I think the red looks amazing. But I tell you, this yellow one's growing on me now. It's a head turner, I'll tell you that. People definitely look. Might have something to do with the fat Santa talking to himself sat above it <laughs> get out of the way pigeon bear in mind this is based on Moto2 technology very very forgiving I've got this in sport mode now this thing has five different rider modes there's rain, road, sport, track and a rider one which you can customise to exactly how you like and within those they obviously have different ABS and traction control amounts they've got different engine maps on them I think the rain mode obviously that's the softest out the lot of them that drops the uh, power output from the engine from the stated 128 130 bhp down to I think it's either 80 or 90 it might even be 100 actually I think it's 100 drops it down quite considerably anyway and then obviously the track has absolute minimal traction control front wheel lift uh, ABS, in fact, I think you can switch all of that off. Oh, one thing I have not done with this is ridden at night, believe it or not. Because it's been blowing torrential rain during the day when I've been out. I haven't really fancied being out at night with this. So, I haven't tested the headlights. And yes, occasionally, people do complain that I don't speak about the headlights go to TMF's channel I know TMF does all that go to his channel and ask him nationals but I suggest if you're thinking of buying 
a Street Triple 765 RS but you decide not to because you think the headlights aren't quite bright enough then that's a new one on me this bike is just beautiful I cannot think of anything I don't like about this bike even the fuel economy it's a 15 litre tank but this thing is still knocking back I think it's about 52 miles per gallon for normal riding you're not pussyfooting around there that's normal riding it's pretty amazing uh, price wise £11,295 I mean in today's market I really don't think that's bad at all for the the quality of bike you're getting here I know the Hornet is only seven grand but it hasn't got any of the bells and whistles that this thing's got this does feel a much sharper machine in comparison but I do think it's unfair to compare the two because the Hornet it's aimed at a different market to this hence the price difference competition for this wow well in this sort of middleweight naked market at the moment this seems to be the hot one in the industry you've got this you've got the KTM you've got the new Suzuki 8 is it 8X or S8 or something like that I think Chops has just done a vid on that so check out his channel uh, what else do you have obviously you've got the Hornet I think if budget wasn't a concern this would definitely, definitely be on my target list. There's just nothing I don't like about this bike. I genuinely really, really like it. I would be perfectly happy to have this in my garage. It feels comfortable. I'm amazed that effectively their baby triple, you know, the street has always been regarded as the, the little baby one. It actually feels pretty big to me. It feels much bigger than the the old one would I have this over the 1200 well I mean obviously <laughs> bigger's better isn't it you want the bigger one you want the bigger engine between your legs well I do anyway but I wouldn't be disappointed if I could only have this one it, it genuinely it's a lovely lovely bike it's gonna be a lot of fun on beautiful dry twisty flowing roads proper riding roads this thing is just gonna it's going to eat it, chew it, and come back looking for more. Well, folks, it looks like I'm going to get wet. Very, very wet. You might see I'm sporting the road skin hoodie still. This is waterproof. Well, the inner liner's waterproof. The outer liner, that's just going to get saturated, so it'll be cold to wear on a cold day if it gets wet. Thanks very much for all your feedback. For those of you who've gone and um, bought the hoodie, following on from the review vid if you're liking the look of it folks remember if you use the code teapot1 you'll get 10% off all roadskin products so check out the links down below and make use of that if you wish oh service intervals I didn't mention service intervals service intervals on this are every 6,000 miles so same as the um, same as the GS actually oh, temperature feels like it's dropping what do you mean? <laughs> this is snow Look, it's snow lying in the road. <laughs> it's like being back, back in the Arden Forest again. Not quite, but you know, it started like this. I, I rode this morning and then chucked a pair of jeans on and wandered up the road with a dog in jeans and t-shirt this morning. It was lovely. If you're liking the look of this, folks, head on down to your local Triumph, chuck a leg over, take one for a spin, see for yourself. I really don't think you're going to be disappointed. Nice one, Triumph. Loving this. Got loads of other bike review vids in the playlist, so make sure you check one of them out if any of them take your fancy. And in the meantime, keep doing your thing. Keep getting on out there. Look after those that you love. But most importantly, most importantly, live your life. Woo-ha! Nationals! Woo-ha!